looking overseas, there's been no decisive response by the Albanese government to the wave of rioting and looting in PNG, even though a crisis there could produce a massive problem on our northern borders. Or it could lead to China sending tactical police to our very doorstep. There's also been no decisive response either by the government to the crisis in the Middle East. The Prime Minister dithered for a week about sending a frigate to the Red Sea and then let down our allies, the very same allies, of course, we're relying on for those nuclear submarines, which is madness given so much of our trade comes through the Red Sea trade route. Now, I think it was utterly gutless of the government and internationally embarrassing when we're supposed to be a fair income middle power, not to send a frigate. And yes, I know the Foreign Minister, Penny Wong, she's left today to tour the region, but she won't be visiting the site of those Hamas atrocities as other world dignitaries have. And I expect she'll spend plenty of time lecturing Israel and trying to appease the pro-Palestinian lobby as much as she is about all the other issues facing Israel. And I don't expect, while she's there, that she's going to call out the disgusting anti-Semitism sweeping much of the world, including here. The Coalition welcomes Foreign Minister Penny Wong finally taking the time to visit Israel, but we note that it is three months later than it should have been and three months later than our allied partners have around the world. But it is disappointing that on her trip to Israel she hasn't found the time and won't find the time to get to southern Israel to visit those communities that were directly affected, to visit those kibbutzes that were the target of Hamas's attacks on the 7th of October, as many other world leaders have done. When asked about this on television today, the Prime Minister didn't seem to know anything about it. Well, it's time for Mr. Mr Albanese to take an interest in these matters and to direct his foreign minister to visit the affected sites so that they can develop an appreciation for just how significant these attacks have been on Israel and the Jewish community. Well, part of the government's inertia is that many of its activists, its MPs, the union movement, the hardcore lefties in places like the Prime Minister's seat of Graindler, they don't really believe in Australia. Underlying the government's failed Indigenous voice referendum was deep embarrassment about a national story and a desire to retell it as a story of shame. Even now, the federal government is still promoting treaties and so-called treaty truth-telling and considering legislating local and regional Indigenous voices, despite the fact that over 60 per cent of us voted against Indigenous separatism. Now, this is where the gulf between elites and mainstream Australians is just getting wider. While woke businesses virtue signal about destocking Australia Day merchandise and some 81 green left local councils are refusing to have citizenship ceremonies on January 26, most of us, most Australians, still believe that our country is worth celebrating. Today, the Institute of Public Affairs published new polling showing that fewer than one in five Australians want to change the date of Australia Day. While nearly nine out of 10 of us say they are proud to be Australian, and nearly seven out of 10 of us say that Australian history was something to be proud of. The only age group that's less sure about our country are those aged under 25. Just 42% of them want to keep Australia Day on January 26, not out because of non-stop school and university propaganda about Invasion Day. Hardly surprising, given this is a generation that's been brainwashed since birth. They don't even know what a woman is anymore. So, yes, it's great to be back on air tonight. It's good to be on your television. But by God, we've got a job ahead of us this year to take up the fight to all those who want to run our country down, and especially to the governments that are letting us down. Australia is still the best country in the world. I spent a lot of time in the bush and in the cities. I had a terrific break. I got around and I tell you, I have not changed my view. But to stay that way, we need governments, state and federal to lift their game. And if they won't or don't, then it's up to us to use our votes and show them the door. Now, after last year's voice vote, ordinary Australians, well, we've found our voice, haven't we? And the silent majority is no longer staying silent. 2024, bring it on.